Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to my channel. My name is Wazza Tuts and um, I do a variety of stuff on my channel and recently I've been getting a lot of comments from a lot of my users. I mean I haven't posted in a long time but a lot of people have been asking how do we do a lot of this online stuff because you create this whole JSON platform that we could add users and stuff and it was very generic PHP um, and I was thinking well maybe I could share some of my skills that I'm using with inside my workplaces and stuff recently um, that will be able to show you how to gradually grow your skills and use a framework for any backend work that you might need for your games that you might be using. But I thought I'd make it a little bit more fun instead of just sticking with the whole game theme. I thought I'll show you actually how to build pretty much a full social media platform uh, by just using API calls. So it won't actually we won't design anything to make it look nice. But we will be designing it to just work as, as an API route. So we can call specific stuff and then our backend will be able to work out the logic and then we can get a response back. And I'll show you how all this stuff works throughout the project. However, this uh, first video is all going to be about getting ourselves set up and what I'm going to need you to have for this for this um, series. So we might as well just get started. So first things first, we're going to pop onto um, our browser. Now, because this is all going to be backend stuff, we're going to need some type of server. Um, now, you could buy one if you want to. That's entirely up to you. Um, or you could host one locally, which a lot of devs these days do. We normally host this type of stuff locally on our machine. And then we can work with any server scripting language um, locally. So a lot of people go down a different sets of routes. I mean, some people will use this horrible program, which is XAMPP. Uh, not, I mean, there's nothing wrong with using XAMPP. I'm, I'm not going to, I mean, we all use that one stage of our lives, but we steadily get better at development. So we kind of step away from that. Uh, so... We can use ZAMP. Um, there's a few others. I think one's called WAMP. I think it's kind of same name. Um, I mean, they're all the t same type of stuff. But you can see it runs as an Apache web server, um, and it has SQL databases because it's really important because we're going to be using a lot of stuff for databases, and it supports our PHP program language, which is what we're going to be using for this series. But we're not going to be using that. Um, we're going to step into 2020, um, and we're going to use some applications that are freely available for us and make things a lot more better so we can host quite a few different things on a specific platform. Now, I don't know if many people have heard of this, but there's a thing called Docker. Um, and now Docker pretty much is like a VM, so a virtual machine, that we can spin up all these instances of what we want. And we can have servers just pop up and pop down, and we can use them as freely as we like. So what we're going to grab is this actual Docker desktop, and you'll download whichever one's suitable for your machine. Now, I'm going to be using Windows, so Obviously, if you're using Windows, download the Windows version. There might be an instance that you might have to change something in your BIOS. This is just because you need some virtual me machine stuff. Um, so it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that if you need to. But it's it's dead easy if you ever come across that issue. If you're really struggling, uh, give me a shout and I'll see if I can try and guide you through. I have I've already got it installed. And I'm sure there's pretty much loads of YouTubers that show you how to install Docker Desktop. So... Um, shout out to them if they can give you a hand. Um, just jump onto one of their videos and obviously you can get it running how you want to see it. The next thing you want to probably download is a terminal. Um, there's nothing wrong with using things like PowerShell. If you want to use PowerShell, you're more than welcome to use that. I don't use this because there's no point of using PowerShell at all. Uh, you can't use, well, I suppose you could. You could use Command Prompt on Windows. Uh, it's not the best, but that is an option. If you've got git download, but I'll show you how to download in a second, you can use git bash. Now this is probably one of the preferred things to use if you want to use that, uh, especially on Windows. If you're on uh, Mac OS, obviously you've got Pure Terminal, which is probably the best. Um, I just can't afford a Mac, so I, I don't really use them. And then what I, I am using at the moment on my machine is a thing called Commander. This was introduced to a, by a friend of mine, um, and I've been so addicted to using this it's ridiculous how often I'm using this emulator. But basically, it's just a terminal. It looks nice. Um, you can set up specific settings, and it's just a lot more neater. The nice thing about this, though, is that if you go down on the actual website, it says Download Fill. Now, this Download Fill will give you everything in regards to Git, which we're going to need because we're going to set up a repository. Um, 
well, I'll, I'll be setting up a repository so you can download these projects and I'll show you how to access them. And then you can pull down the lessons whilst we go through them, but that'll be in, in, in the future episodes to come. So first things first, grab yourself Docker, get that installed. You're probably gonna have to reset your machine. The next thing to do after that would then be download command. Again, you probably have to reset your machine after this. And then the last thing you wanna jump onto is a thing called LaraDoc. Now this is basically just a repository of a LaraDoc instance is pretty much a Docker container that will spin up anything that we need to use for Laravel. Now Laravel is what we're gonna be using for these projects. Um, so you can have a quick look if you want to have a look at that. This is basically just a PHP framework, which makes things a lot more easier for us if we want to make, uh, for example, some database tables and we want them to talk to each other with relationships and etc. It's a lot more easier, but I'm going to be doing very detailed step by steps um, on how we come across creating the social platform for our end users. So stick with it. Uh, I mean, at the moment, we're just getting all the stuff at the moment, but it will be very detailed. If you've seen any of my other tutorials, you'll notice that they are very, very well detailed. But this Laura doc is pretty much because we got Docker, we can now use this Laura doc. And basically it gives us PHP versions. Um, it runs Nginx and Apache. Um, those are just like server hosting type things. I'm not very familiar with it, but pretty much it's just things that we can run our services with. It has Composer built into it. And it just makes things very, very easy. Um, you can see PHP, Nginx, MySQL, Redis, and Composer. And it's dead easy to set up. So you just follow the step-by-step -step instructions here, which we're gonna do very shortly. And we're gonna set up this sort of Laura doc container and get it up and running and actually see it working. So once you have everything pretty much all compiled, what we can do is we can go onto our commander so we can see this is what the interface looks like. Um, so once you've got your Docker installed, once you've got Commander installed, we're pretty much ready to start with this Laura doc. And you can see I'm currently in a directory. This is my work directory. So I'm actually going to come out of that just quickly, which is the cd dot dot forward slash. So obviously my name's Wayne, if you haven't realized that. Why is the touch is kind of short for Wayne, I guess. And I'm just going to make a directory here. So we're just going to call make directory. And I'm going to call this YouTube. Um, because it's going to be the YouTube series. And I'm just going to call it YouTube social media. Social media. Oh, God, I can't spell. Social media. And then once we've done that, we can quite easily just jump into that. Uh, so we can jump to YouTube social media. A shortcut key, you can start typing a little bit and you can press tab. That will finish the rest of it. So that's just a bit of a hint if you want to know that. Um, so we're going to jump to that folder. And then if we do ls, that basically kind of tells us what's inside that directory. ls-la will give us a more detailed structure of what's actually inside that folder. So it's kind of like going on to your folder here and then you know navigating through the directories. We're just doing it through a command. Some people think we're in the matrix doing this, but really it's just a bit of simple English. What we want to do is once we've got all this installed, we're just going to follow this structure and we're just going to go on a git clone and we're going to clone the repository. And basically depending on your internet will depend on how long this takes. And if I do an ls on here, you'll see now I've got a Laura doc here, which is just a folder. Um, and this has all come from the repository from here. So if you actually had to go on to this on the interwebs, um, you'll notice that it's got all the folder structure and everything's within inside that folder. And all this will be inside then, you'll see it shortly. So if we go back onto our command profile, cd Laura doc, and then remember if you do ls, it gives us all our folders. If we do ls-la, you can see everything was inside there. So if we do a bit of a comparison, we can see that we've got this dev container here. So it's pretty much pulled everything that was on this website, i.e. git, and it's pulled all these folder structures and everything that we're gonna need for this Laura doc to work. So after, once we've done that, we can follow on to the next one. So it's saying, okay, so once we're on here, we wanna copy this EMV. So we just copy that, go onto our commander, um, control L to clear everything. And then if you just right click, it will paste. Um, you could also, if you wanted to, control V, which is also paste. If you want to clear everything like I just did then, you can just control C. So these are just like shortcut keys. So control L will clear. If you right click, it'll paste. Control C to clear if you want. You could do control V to paste as well if you want. Um, these are just simple things to do. So this is basically saying we're going to copy 
the env example file and we're going to call it actually .env, but we're going to still keep the same file. So if we go down, you'll notice that we've got this env example here. And all we're doing is we're saying, okay, we're going to copy this file. So whatever's inside it. So if we click on it, you'll see that there's loads and loads of information. You don't need to worry about this. Don't be too scared just yet. Um, but it's got loads and loads and loads of information in it. And we're going to copy that and we're going to turn it into an actual env. Now EMVs, I'm going to go into a lot more detail when we start um, working on our projects. But for now, we're just going to stick with what LaraDoc's telling us. So if we just copy that, you'll notice that nothing's really happened. But if I do an ls-la, you'll notice I should have an EMV file somewhere in all this. There is there. So we've got this EMV file that was created at 2032, which is now um, half past eight. And we've got that EMV file as what we said here. Control L, just get rid of that. And then once we've done that, we can do this doc, doc compose up. And then this basically will spin up the Docker instance. So basically it's saying, okay, we're gonna run or we're gonna start on our on our Docker. We wanna run Nginx, which is pretty much like our Apache, so our web host. Um, but in this case, we're using Nginx. A lot more nicer to manage in my case. I mean, it does have Apache, as you can see here, Apache is here and it's also got Caddy. So depending on which one you feel more comfortable with, you can run whichever one. I like using Nginx, that's what I prefer. MySQL is what we're gonna be using, excuse me, for our databases. And this is very important because, uh, I mean, there's lots of others. As you can see here, there's quite a few different types of database management systems. Uh, whichever one you feel more comfortable with, a lot of people use MongoDB. Um, I use MySQL, some people use my MariaDB. So again, it's up to you what you want to use. Redis is very important, and I'll explain why this will be important in, in the future videos to come. And then Workspace okay, is just so what we're going to be working in. That all um, so this is ready. Um, that we we're going to use this Docker Compose up, which is going to run it all. So we can just copy that and paste that in. Oops, I've got a plus there. So if we just paste that in, um, that should start building everything. So you'll notice that it starts downloading all the files and stuff. So depending on your internet speed um, will depend on how quick this takes place. So um, I'm just gonna pause the video here and then um, I'll restart it once it's complete. So it'll just do all this and then once it's finished, I'll, I'll be back. Okay, so um, that took about 20 minutes to finish. So it does take a, a while to happen. Now you'll notice that um, I do have an error here. I wouldn't worry about it too much. This is trying to run PHP my admin. I'm not really too bothered about that because we're not gonna be using that. Um, but it has run everything else that we wanted. So we've got SQL running, our Docker container, Redis, which is important, our workspace where everything's going to be in. So we can see here um, our PHP version and we're gonna be running our Nginx server, which is fine. Now, I just wanna remind you that this Laura doc is quite big. So there's a lot of stuff in it. Um, so if you remember, we had, if we go back onto that website, you'll notice that we've got all this stuff that it's installing. There's quite a lot of stuff inside there. Um, like bloatware pretty much if you had to think about it that way. Um, but that way we have everything that we need. So if I need the Xdebug, I've got that there and this is what a lot of developers use is Xdebug and you know, just a few things like that are all pretty much ready to go out, out the box. There are different ways to run these. I mean, there's lots of tutorials on how to make just like specific PHP containers if you wanna just do that. If I'm one on the internet, you're more than welcome to do that too. Um, but this is just um, my approach and, and my way of doing it. So it says here, um, you need to open up your projects.emv file um, and set the following. So we're gonna set the DB host to be my, MySQL, our Redis host to be Redis and our Q host to be Beanstalk. Um, and to do this, we're gonna be using um, a coding platform of choice. Now, some people use different um, IDEs. In my case, I use PHP Storm. You can pick it up um, on their website. I think I pay about, I think it's six or eight pounds a month, I think. Um, I use it for everything that I work on. So as you can see, they've got quite a bit of stuff. Um, so I do a lot of work um, in regards to anything with PHP Storm. So I'm just going to open up my location. So Windows, um, and then I called it YouTube, didn't I? Yeah, YouTube Social. And we're just going to open up the LaraDoc folder. And basically this is all those files that we saw when we did the LSLA. Um, now I can't fold PHP Storm. It does everything for me. Um, when it comes to like code hinting and stuff like that, I would really suggest you pick it up. They do have a trial, so give it a go if you want. Um, if you don't like it, you can switch over to VS Code. That's free if you want to use that. Um, if you like one of the elite developers, you can just use the terminal um, or you could just use like Notepad or something like that. 
So it did say that we just need to change something in here. So we need to go to find our EMV file. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, this is the file we made here. Um, and it's saying that we just need to change this DB host. So if we copy that, do a control F, control V, can't find it in here. Why is that? Um, I think we probably have to add these in manually, I think, if, if they're not in at all. Yes, yeah, so that's not in. And this is not here. So it looks like we need to put these in ourselves. So if we just copy that, we scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I guess if we just paste at the bottom, that should be fine. So if we save that. And then if we just run this localhost on to here, you can see that we're getting a 404 not found and it's using Nginx, which is good because basically we haven't set up anything. Um, so it's looking for something to do with the Nginx, like a file or, or something like that, but we haven't set anything up for that to work yet. So that pretty much sums up creating um, our Docker instance. So we've got Docker, we've got our console, we've installed Lara Doc. Um, so that's not up and running. So whenever we want to run that, we can. If you ever want to see it, you can just go on your toolbar here and you can actually open up on the dashboard. And you can see that your Lara Doc instance is here. Um, we're not really bothered about this PHP admin, but these are all the Docker containers that it, it, it opened. So Nginx, our PHP, Workspace, Redis, SQL, and our Docker container. Um, if you ever want to stop it, you can quite easily just say stop um, and that will stop all the containers. Bear in mind, this is using your system memory. So if you are wanting to I don't know, play games or something, um, make sure that you do stop it. You don't want to keep it running in the background. So apart from that, that's pretty much all set up and ready to go. So we're going to end this session here. And what we'll do is we'll move in the next episode. We're going to set up Laravel. So it'll be this um, inside our Docker container. Um, but I'm also going to show you how to set up multiple projects. So um, let's say, for example, you want to work on more than one thing by using just this one container. Um, we can do that all in the next episode. I hope I know this is a lot of information. I hope you really enjoyed it. And um, I hope to see you guys in the next video. See you guys later. Goodbye.